Beauty and the Beast, in a faraway village, lived a merchant with his daughters. While going on a journey, the merchant asks his daughters what they want when he returns. Elder daughters ask for jewelry and precious stones, but the youngest daughter, Belle, asks for his safe return. When her father insists, Belle asks for a rose. When the father is returning, he stops by a garden to cut a rose flower, but an ugly beast spots the merchant and punishes him. When Belle gets to know about the beast, she goes to rescue her father. The beast says that he will free her father only if she comes to stay with him in the palace. Belle agrees and joins the beast at his palace. All her needs in the palace are satisfied at just the clap of her hands. Eventually, the beast and Belle bond over friendship. One day, Belle finds the beast stumbling in pain outside the palace. Belle is scared. She fears the death of the beast and expresses her love for him. Then the magical spell reverses, and the beast is transformed into a charming young prince. The prince marries Belle, and they lived happily ever after. The new food, I see from the current columns of the Daily Press that Professor Plum, of the University of Chicago, has just invented a highly concentrated form of food. All the essential nutritive elements are put together in the form of pellets, each of which contains from one to two hundred times as much nourishment as an ounce of an ordinary article of diet. These pellets, diluted with water, will form all that is necessary to support life. The professor looks forward confidently to revolutionizing the present food system. Now this kind of thing may be all very well in its way, but it is going to have its drawbacks as well. In the bright future anticipated by Professor Plum, we can easily imagine such incidents as the following. The smiling family were gathered round the hospitable board. The table was plenteously laid with a soup plate in front of each beaming child, a bucket of hot water before the radiant mother, and at the head of the board the Christmas dinner of the happy home, warmly covered by a thimble and resting on a poker chip. The expectant whispers of the little ones were hushed as the father, rising from his chair, lifted the thimble and disclosed a small pill of concentrated nourishment on the chip before him. Christmas turkey, cranberry sauce, plum pudding, mince pie it was all there, all jammed into that little pill and only waiting to expand. Then the father with deep reverence, and a devout eye alternating between the pill and heaven, lifted his voice in a benediction. At this moment there was an agonized cry from the mother, Oh, Henry, quick! Baby has snatched the pill. It was too true. Dear little Gustavus Adolphus, the golden-haired baby boy, had grabbed the whole Christmas dinner off the poker chip and bolted it. 350 pounds of concentrated nourishment passed down the esophagus of the unthinking child. Clap him on the back, cried the distracted mother. Give him water. The idea was fatal. The water striking the pill caused it to expand. There was a dull rumbling sound and then, with an awful bang, Gustavus Adolphus exploded into fragments, and when they gathered the little corpse together, the baby lips were parted in a lingering smile that could only be worn by a child who had eaten thirteen Christmas dinners. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, a fair princess indeed, Snow White was named for the color of her skin, which was white as snow, hair as black as ebony, and lips as red as a rose. Her father, having lost his wife, married again, and this new queen was as beautiful as she was proud. She would often consult her mirror and ask mirror, mirror, on the wall, who was the fairest of them all. As Snow White began to grow, she became more and more beautiful, and the queen's magic mirror soon began to say so. Enraged and filled with jealousy, the queen sent a huntsman to kill Snow White and bring her heart, the huntsman, pitying the innocent Snow White, told her to run away and never come back. 
He, instead, delivered to the queen the heart of a pig. When the queen consulted her mirror and found that she had been tricked, she determined to kill Snow White herself and so began to prepare her poisoned apple. Snow White, in the meantime, found a place with seven dwarfs, whom she lived with and cared for. One day, when they were at work in the mines, the queen went to see Snow White, disguised as an old peasant woman selling apples. Snow White was convinced to take a bite out of the apple and instantly fell down, as if dead. When the dwarfs found her, they were distraught and laid her in a glass coffin. One day, as a prince was passing by, he noticed the dwarfs mourning over a beautiful sleeping girl, for she remained as beautiful as she ever was, and was mesmerized by her beauty. He kissed her hand to bid her farewell, and at that moment the apple dislodged itself and Snow White opened her eyes. The prince was so happy that he asked for her hand in marriage and she accepted. There was a grand celebration, and they lived and reigned happily together. The evil queen became sick from her envy and eventually died. We must always remember, from the fate of the queen, that if you lust after physical beauty, you will, indeed lose your peace, and be quite unhappy when you are not considered the most beautiful. On the contrary, kindness and gentleness win the hearts of many. Rapunzel, a poor couple got themselves into big trouble when they stole fruit from their neighbor's garden. The neighbor, who was a witch, found out about the theft and demanded that they give her their child when she was born, to which the couple accepted. The young girl, named Rapunzel by the witch, grew up to be very beautiful, but was kept locked away in the tower by the wicked witch, from which there was no way in or out. When the witch wanted to go in and see her, she would say, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, so that I might climb the golden stair. One day, when Rapunzel was singing to pass the time, she happened to catch the attention of a young prince, who was so enchanted by her voice that he learned the secret of how to get to her. While Rapunzel was startled by him at first, they soon fell in love. It so happened that Rapunzel accidentally told the witch, My, you are much heavier than my prince. After which the witch, infuriated, chopped off her hair and threw her out into the wilderness. The prince was blinded by thorns and roamed the land, lamenting his beloved Rapunzel. When they found each other again, the prince being lured by a beautiful voice, they cried for joy and the tears which fell from Rapunzel's eyes went into the prince's and cleansed them, enabling him to see again. The two lived together in peace for the rest of their lives. The important thing to take away from this story is that one should never steal because it can have bad consequences. As in the case of Rapunzel's parents, who lost their beautiful daughter because they were greedy and stole fruits, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, this one is sure to teach your children to be mindful and respectful of others, as it tells of a curious little girl called Goldilocks, who trespassed on the property of a family of three bears, who had gone out into the woods while their porridge cooled. She had been lost in the woods when she stumbled upon the cottage, and noticed through the window that there were three bowls of porridge on the table and that there was nobody home. If she had been more respectful, she would have waited for the bears to come home, but, instead, she let her curiosity get the better of her and let herself into the house. In fact, not only does Goldilocks trespass, but she also ate baby bear's porridge, broke his chair, and slept in his bed. When they found her, she woke up and was so frightened by them that she jumped out the window and ran away. Had Goldilocks been more respectful, the bears would have treated her with kindness, and she would have made new friends. Instead, she did not respect others' space. The riddle, the princess of a kingdom announces that she will marry a person who asks her a riddle that she can't answer. But if she answers, the suitor will be killed. The princess answers the riddles and gets nine persons killed. 
Then a wandering prince hears about it and decides to try it. He asks the princess, one killed none, but still killed twelve? What is it? The princess fails, but steals the answer from the prince when he is sleeping. The next day, she answers the question and sentences the prince to death. But he proves that the princess cheated him to get the answer to the riddle. Eventually, they get married. The frog prince, a bratty princess, mistakenly drops her golden ball into a pond. In the pond lives a frog and on seeing the golden ball, the frog comes out. He tells the princess that he shall give the ball back if she agrees to take him along with her to the palace. The reluctant princess agrees to the deal, and the frog goes with her to the palace. The frog befriends the princess and makes her kiss him. The princess kisses him unwillingly, but when that is done, the frog's spell is broken and he magically turns into a young handsome prince. They fall in love with each other and get married. The glass mountain, there was a glass mountain on which an apple tree grew. Anyone who picked the apple would be led into a castle where a beautiful princess lived. Many try but fail and get killed in the process. A knight in golden armor tries but could reach only halfway. In his next attempt, an eagle attacks him and he dies. Another young boy tries to go up but is attacked by a wildcat. He kills the wildcat and uses its claws to climb the mountain. When the eagle attacks the boy, he kills the eagle by playing tricks. He picks the apple and is led to the castle where he marries the princess. All the previous young men, who were killed while trying to go up, turn alive when the dead eagle's blood falls on them. Sweet porridge, in a village, there lived a woman with her daughter. They were very poor and hungry. The poor daughter meets an old woman, who gives her a pot that can cook porridge. Whenever the girl says, little pot, cook, it cooks up sweet porridge, the mother and daughter have enough to fill their stomachs every day. One day the mother forgets how to stop cooking, and the whole village drowns in porridge. The little girl arrives and says, little pot, stop, and saves the village. How did you like our list of fairy tales for kids? Let us know about your kids' favorite fairy tales in the comments below. The ear of a corn, in a village far away, people were ungrateful towards God's creation of hundredfold ears of the corns. They ignored the beautiful creation and misused it. The angered Lord announces that the corn will no more have any ears. People realize their mistake and seek mercy. Then the Lord agrees to bring back a few ears to the corn, but not hundreds of them like the corn used to have in the past. The Ugly Duckling, this heartwarming tale, penned by Hans Christian Andersen, tells of a little duckling that was called ugly by everyone at the farm where he lived. He was bullied and mistreated by everyone, until one day he was forced to run away. The miserable little duckling was mocked and scorned by everyone who met him, and found himself wandering through the frozen winter, alone and barely managing to survive. When he flew to a lake to swim, he met three beautiful swans who greeted him cheerfully. He was confused by their friendly greeting, for all this time he had been chased away. When he looked down at his reflection in the water, he was surprised to see that he had grown into a beautiful swan. A little girl who was throwing breadcrumbs for the noble swans even said that he was the most beautiful of all. We should never judge others by their appearances because it is not appearances that matter. Not only can one develop beauty over time, but true beauty is that which lies within. So if we endure and keep moving forward in life, as the little duckling did, then we may, one day, find ourselves to be considered the most beautiful of all. Swami Vivekananda Where was Vivekananda born? Swami Vivekananda was born Narendranath Dutta on January 12, 1863, to an aristocratic Bengali family of Calcutta. 
His father, Vishwanath Dutta, was an attorney at the Calcutta High Court, and his mother, Bhubaneshwari Devi, was a devout housewife. The progressive and rational thinking of his parents mixed with a deep-rooted spirituality shaped young Narendranath's mind. As a young boy, Swami Vivekananda excelled in music, gymnastics, and studies. He went on in life to become one of the greatest Indians to introduce the philosophies of yoga and Vedanta to the Western world. He is also credited with raising interfaith awareness, bringing Hinduism to the status of a major world religion during the 19th century. Early years, Swami Vivekananda was one of nine siblings. He was spiritually inclined at an early age, fascinated by wandering ascetics and monks. His education was both a mix of Western and Indian worlds. He studied Western philosophies, religion, history, social science, art and literature along with the Puranas, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, and the Vedas. Around this time, he was also briefly introduced to the Brahmo Samaj, in 1881, he passed the Fine Arts Examination and completed his Bachelor of Arts degree in 1884 from General Assembly's institution, where the principal described him to be a genius, with an amazing sense and understanding of philosophies. Over the course of several years, Swami Vivekananda studied various schools of esoteric philosophies. He first met Ramankrishna Paramahansa, who was to later become his guru, in 1881. His meeting with Ramankrishna again in 1884, after his father's death, was a life-changing event. He turned toward a monastic life and after Ramankrishna's death from throat cancer, Swami Vivekananda and the other disciples were left without shelter. He decided to convert a dilapidated house to establish the first Ramankrishna math at Barnagar and start the monastic order of Ramankrishna, monastic vows and life after. Swami Vivekananda took his formal monastic vows along with the other disciples in 1886. He assumed the name Swami Vivekananda much later. In 1888, Swami Vivekananda left the monastery after receiving the blessings of Sarada Devi, Ramankrishna's wife, and embarked on a journey around India, the Ramankrishna mission. The more he traveled, he understood how poor and backward the masses were, and how important it was to uplift the poor, educate both men and women, and this sowed the seed for the Ramankrishna mission. After he had traveled for five years around India, he traveled to the United States of America. After spending a few months in Japan, China, and Canada, he attended the Parliament of World's Religions on September 11, 1893, at Chicago, where he spoke on Vedanta, Advaita, and Hinduism and its philosophies. He spent three years lecturing, touring, traveling around the various cities of United States of America, back to India, 1897 to 1899 and death, Swami Vivekananda established the Ramankrishna Mission on May 1, 1897, in Calcutta. Its ideals were based on Karma Yoga. He further established two other ashrams, one in Mayavadi, near Almora, and one in Madras, Chennai, and founded two journals. After another tour of the United States and France, Swami Vivekananda settled down at the Balur Math. On July 4, 1902, he left his earthly body and attained Samadhi, Swami Vivekananda, legacy. He inspired the freedom fighters of India like Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Nataji Subhas Chandra Bose, Gandhiji. Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore is also deeply influenced by his writings and teachings. His influence to this day extends into Hinduism. The way we look at Neo-Vedanta and Advaita philosophies, Swami Vivekananda, teachings, 1. 
new understanding of religion and the explanation that reality is common to all humanity and that science and religion are not contradictory but complementary. 2.New view of man. 3.New principle of morality and ethics. 4.Bridge between East and West. His birthday is celebrated as National Youth Day. Swami Vivekananda quotes, 1.All that man has to do is to take care of three things, good thought, good word, good deed. 2.Self-sacrifice, indeed, is the basis of all civilizations. 3.Please everyone without becoming a hypocrite or a coward. 4.The real individuality is that which never changes and will never change, and that is the God within us. APJ Abdul Kalam APJ Abdul Kalam is also known as the Missile Man of India. APJ Abdul Kalam was the 11th President of India and a great scientist. Early childhood, Abdul Pakir Jainulabuddin Abdul Kalam, born on October 15, 1931 and later known as APJ Abdul Kalam was the son of a boat owner who ferried Hindu pilgrims from the Rameshwaram Temple in Tamil Nadu. His father was also an imam at the local mosque and his mother was a housewife. Little did they know that their son would one day become the first man of India. Kalam worked as a paperboy to support his father. He had four brothers and one sister. He was not the brightest student in his school but was very hard working. He went on to study physics and graduated from Madras University. He wanted to become a fighter pilot. He studied aerospace engineering and also completed a PhD in physics to become a scientist, career and work. After completing his PhD, Kalam took the post of chief scientist at the Aeronautical Development of Defense Research and Development, but he was not satisfied with his job. Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, he shifted to Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, as a project director. There he led many projects and was extremely successful at each of them. In 1970, Kalam directed two projects, Project Devil and Project Valiant, which were to develop missiles from the successful technology of SLV programs. Rohini-1 was launched in space using the SLV rocket. Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, IGMDP, missiles under the mission Agni and Prithvi were launched under Kalam's leadership and all were successful. He was also appointed as the Chief Executive of the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, Pokhran II Nuclear Tests. From the year 1992 to 1999, Kalam was appointed as the Chief Scientist Advisor to the Prime Minister of India and the Secretary of Defense and Research. During this time, Kalam also served as the Chief Project Coordinator for the Pokhran II Nuclear Tests. After this, he was known as the Missile Man of India. In the year 2002, Kalam succeeded K. R. Narayan as the 11th President of India and served till 2007. Achievements and Awards 1. Kalam was the proud recipient of Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, and the Bharat Ratna Awards from the Indian government. 2. He was also awarded the Indira Gandhi National Award for National Integration. 3. Not only by the Indian government, Kalam was awarded medals from the government of USA. 4. Kalam had received doctorates from 40 universities. In addition to his work, he had also authored a number of books. Amongst them, India 2020 was the most appreciated and widely read book. Ignited Minds, Mission India. Inspiring Thoughts are some of his other books. He also used to give lectures at many reputed colleges across the globe. Death. Kalam breathed his last while giving a lecture at IIM Shillong. The entire world was saddened by the death of a simple, humble, and great man. Mahatma Gandhi. The Life of Mahatma Gandhi Summary. Name. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. Popular name. Mahatma which means a great soul, date of birth, 
October 2nd, 1869, place of birth, Purbundar, Gujarat, India, death, assassinated on January 30th, 1948, Gandhi and the Indian freedom struggle. Mahatma Gandhi's history had been a mix of unpredictable events that led to a revolution responsible for changing the face of Indian history and its eventual independence. The greatness of this man is evident from the fact that he had five Nobel Prize nominations during his lifetime. Let us dig further and look into the timeline of Mahatma Gandhi, who is also known as the father of nation in India. One dot got married in May 1883 to Kasturba Makanji. Two dot in September 1888 went to University College London for further studies pursuing philosophical study of religions like Hinduism, Christianity, Buddhism, and such. 3. In 1893, went to South Africa for a year contract to work for an Indian firm in Natal and was in South Africa for 21 years after that. 4. Thrown out of the first-class train carriage, even though he had a valid ticket. This was an event that planted the seed of Indian independence in Gandhi's mind. 5. He founded the Natal Indian Congress which aimed at fighting the injustice to Indians in South Africa. The constitution was set up on August 22, 1894. 6. Uh, returned to India in 1916 started a non-violent civil disobedience and became the voice of the oppressed under the British rule in India. 7. In 1921, he led the Indian National Congress and brought about the concept of Swaraj or complete political independence from the British rule. 8. In March, 1922, was arrested for a mass boycott of British goods. 9. In 1930, the British introduced the salt tax, after which Gandhi led a 250-mile salt march to collect his own salt. 10. In 1942, during the Quit India movement, the Congress party, including Mahatma Gandhi, was arrested which resulted in riots. 11. On January 30, 1948, he was assassinated at the Birla House in New Delhi by a militant Hindu nationalist, Nathram Godsa, Mahatma Gandhi quotes, 1. When violence appears to do good, the good is only temporary, the evil it does is permanent. 2. Hate the sin, love the sinner. 3. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Srimavasa Ramanujan, Ramanujan's early years, Srimavasa Ramanujan was one of the most famous mathematical wizards who made important contributions to the field of advanced mathematics. Srimavasa Ramanujan was born on December 22, 1887, to a poor Brahmin family in Arode, a small village in Tamil Nadu, India. He grew up in Kumbakonam town, near Chennai, where his father was employed as a clerk in a cloth merchant's shop. He was an exceptionally good student and won a number of merit certificates and awards. He loved mathematics more than any other subject. Once, when he was just in his middle school classes, he mathematically calculated the approximate length of the equator. He also very clearly knew the values of the square root of 2 and value of pi. Srimavasa Ramanujan Education and Work 1.AT the age of 16, he got a scholarship for his first year at the government college in his hometown. His deep interest in mathematics led him to neglect other subjects because of which he was not able to clear his examinations and had to forego his scholarship. After dropping out of college, he had to struggle a lot to earn his living. Two dot, however, it did not dampen Ramanujan's spirits and he continued to work on problems and theorems. He bought a book authored by G. S. Carr which contained over 5,000 problems. He worked and reworked all the problems and theorems and made new discoveries. He also found a job as an accounts clerk in the office of the Madras Port Trust. Three dot, then, 
He got in touch with V. Ramaswamy Ayer, the founder of the Indian Mathematical Society. With his help, Ramanujan got his paper on Bernoulli numbers published in the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society in 1911. Soon, he became a quite popular in Chennai for his prowess in mathematics, for, in 1913, he casually wrote to the well-known Cambridge mathematician, G. H. Hardy, and told him about his work. Hardy was mighty impressed with Ramanujan's works and assisted him in getting a grant from Tr Trinity College, Cambridge. Five. Ramanujan moved abroad and started to work in collaboration with Hardy, but his health started failing. Despite poor health, he remained engrossed in his research and study of newer vistas in mathematics. In 1916, he graduated from Cambridge with a Bachelor of Science by Research, 6, in 1920, he moved back to India and left for his heavenly abode, what is Srimavasa Ramanujan famous for, 1. Despite having almost no formal training in mathematics, Ramanujan's knowledge of the subject matter was astounding. Without the knowledge of the modern developments in the subject, he had made some important contributions to the field of mathematical analysis, number theory, game theory, infinite series, and continued fractions. Two, da, he was a luminary who rose to great heights from a humble background and followed his heart against the odds in his way. His innovative ideas and vision still serve as a great resource for modern mathematicians. The man who knew infinity, in the honor of Ramanujan, December 22nd is now celebrated as the National Mathematics Day in India. His biography titled The Man Who Knew Infinity was published in 1991 and a movie based on him starring Dev Patel was also shown at the 2015 Toronto Film Festival. Famous quotes by Srimavasa Ramanujan, 1.an equation means nothing to me unless it expresses a thought of God. 2. Have not trodden through a conventional university course. But I am striking out a new path for myself. I have made a special investigation of divergent series in general and the results I get are termed by the local mathematicians as startling.